Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel. So good to have you guys here. Let's go ahead and dive into the week ahead, starting July 19th of 2021 until July 25th, 2021. I have my notes on the right, some intuitive messages and some things that I don't wanna miss. And I have my astrology chart pulled up on the left. I have some cards that I was shuffling as my camera was getting ready for me and as I, as I was getting ready for it. And let's just go ahead and dive right in. So first and foremost, you guys can't see this. I'm going to show you as best as I can. We have the Six of Swords. We have the Lovers. We have Seven of Pentacles, the Six of Pentacles, and also the Ten of Swords. Now, to be completely 100% transparent with you guys, the Seven of Pentacles was the first card to jump up. It's so interesting because intuitively, as I was sitting and meditating and getting ready for our conversation that we're having right now, the, the thing that I heard, the message that I heard, the words that I heard was shadow work. I found this so interesting because shadow work is something that we can do at any point within our journey, at any point within our lives. I find it so interesting that this is coming up while we are in the middle, the majority of us are in the middle of summertime when so many of us are out exploring and focusing on fun and joy and pleasure for the most part. Um, however, it makes sense when I look at the astrology chart. It makes 100% complete sense when I look at the astrology chart. First and foremost, my loves, Pluto, Saturn, Jupiter, Neptune, Chiron are all retrograde. These are planets and these are points, asteroids, that create issues of the past that come to our forefront. In fact, the word that I just heard was what was submerged in our subconscious, what was submerged within our perspective, what was submerged within our life starts to come up to the, 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 uh, the surface. Why? Because these retrograde planets, especially Chiron, now that Chiron is joining Pluto, the planet that rules transformation and our ability or inability to let go or our ability to understand how we can con control and manipulate our, our circumstances or things that are around us and our internal depths, our internal shadow works, so to speak. Um, Saturn ruling our foundation, our commitments, the thing, our, our businesses, our ability to feel mature, our ability to mature. Jupiter ruling expansion and growth, but also the higher self, the guru um, within ourselves. Neptune ruling vibration, our intuition. Chiron ruling, ruling our wounds, our healings, our, our spot that needs the, the most healing. All of these planets are now retrograde, right? Chiron just recently turned retrograde. Chiron retrograde in the sign of Aries is really, really tough for anybody to deal with. Why? Because it really hyper focuses on the, the the feelings within ourselves of like how we identify ourselves and what 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 we are doing, how we define ourselves. It, is it our, that worth? That worth? That value? Um, and if there are strikes against this, right, from childhood or from experiences that just shook us to our core, and this could have happened any time. Um, if there are experiences that shook us to our co core that make us feel not confident anymore, that make us feel like we are incapable, that make us feel like, okay, someone else has to take the baton for me because I can't do it. Some of you guys are being called or have been called to speak up and to speak out or to be an advocate for yourself or to other people. And you've been doing this for years, but something about this week, something about the message, something about something that needs to be said and how you said it or how you say it or how you don't say it feels really, really triggering. The word that I'm hearing is it's messages and things that are being suppressed. Things that need to be said or need to be said a certain way or may you, maybe you, you've been suppressing it, maybe you've been holding it down for so much, for so long because you're trying to comfort or do the right thing or nurture others or put other pe people's needs before your own. You're trying to be a really awesome leader, especially with the sun and Mercury moving to the sign of cancer. As emotional and as sensitive as cancer is, it is a cardinal sign. It wants to be a pioneer for the people by from such an emotional place, but imagine how vulnerable that can be. Chiron, I'm sorry, yeah, Chiron and Mercury are squaring off this week, my loves, and 
Mercury is so emotionally needy right now. Like if there's a lot of emotional needs, there's a lot of emotional support that needs to be had. And some people don't feel like they're being hurt. Some people feel like they're not being seen or when they are seen, they're seen in one certain way. They're seen in one certain light and they're tired of it. They've had enough. And as I'm looking at the seven of pentacles, this is truly confirming this for, for me. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this, the lighting sometimes with um, the recent lighting, which I love, by the way, such a vibe. With the Seven of Pentacles here, it's this person who is putting their hand over what they have set intention for, what is building and budding in their lives, right? The Seven of Pentacles is truly a message of taking a step back in observation, in observance of what you have already done and what you, what has already been done, maybe to you, around you, for you, against you. But I don't know why I'm hearing the word um, advanced. Like what has, what is it? Oh, okay. So Spirit is saying, what is advancing? What is advancing? Um, some of you guys, I don't know why I'm here, and I'm also hearing the word blockade. So some of you guys feel like there is opposition. There is um, an op, like a, 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 an enemy. This enemy is doesn't need to be a person. It could be anything, um, but it kind of reminds me. I'm hearing toy soldiers. It's kind of reminding me of people who are lined up, um, and these little little toy soldiers that are lined up and they just keep advancing. They keep coming through, and you are trying to create these blockages. Spirit is calling you. Um, this week to observe those blockages. What is it that whether you know that it's a blockage or whether it's Just a perception of how you see the circumstance how you see the opposition in your life What is the opposition? What is blocking you from what you truly want? What is blocking you from things being balanced? What is blocking you from things working out and coming together seamlessly and simultaneously? What is blocking that spirit is saying that this is not so much a blockage that is in your external world as much as it is a blockage in your internal world and that's where the shadow work needs to be done i hear it i definitely hear that i definitely hear that especially as i'm looking at these planets right now you guys know i don't look at just one transit i look at the entire ch transit of the of the chart and i look at the entire relationship that they create in the cosmos and how that impacts us here on earth now don't get me wrong every single one of us is so different Right, The energies are still here, but they might infuse themselves and embed themselves and implant themselves in different houses in your personal life, depending on your chart. And then within that, within your personal chart, they may trigger each other in different ways. The other thing that's standing out to me is the, the opposition of power here, this feeling of powerlessness, this feeling of, um, I just heard, I can't bring this to completion. There's something that you guys are really, that's so interesting because I also have the Ten of Swords card here. There's something that you guys, you're, I'm hearing in your, if you're in your personal power, if you had all the power in the world, you would end this cycle. This does not mean that you would say goodbye to a certain circumstance or a cer certain event or something. You would end the suffering. You would end the feelings connected to it. You would end what is um, I just heard the word dismissive, something that keeps dismissing you, something that keeps passing you by, something that you just keep reaching for, you keep reaching for it, and it's just elusive. It keeps missing past your fingertips. Some of you guys understand that there is um, circumstances and events that you are actively being, have navigated away from, especially because we're exiting out of eclipse season. Don't think for one season, I mean, don't think for one second that just because we're out of eclipse season that I'm going to stop talking about it. Again, as your intuitive and your astrologer, your um, astrological reader, these, just because those energies have passed as far as what is going on in the planets at that moment does not mean that they're, the feeling of that, the, the echo of it, the wave of it isn't still being felt by every single one of us. Absolutely. I want you guys to look back at the time of the eclipses and see how there have been major moments of change and transition that have ushered in the wave that you are currently being hit or that hit by or that you are riding now currently. Um, these and now that we're under the wave of this of this energy of this transit these at these planets are still moving forward and it can be really tough waters to navigate I'm gonna be honest with you guys it can be very tough waters to navigate why am I saying waters 
why am I saying water as well? There is a lot of swimming energy here. I'm not going to lie. Even with Earth, you know, Pluto being in the sign of Earth and Saturn being in the sign of air, it's not enough to stabilize. Chiron is just showing the wound right now that's in fire. Uranus is sitting in the sign of Taurus, which is Earth, but Uranus also breaks down the Earth, so the Earth is crumbling. Um, then we have Venus and Mars currently moving through the sign of um, Leo, which is fire, but still, you know, it's just pretty much igniting your passion, your fire, your desire, but it's the Sun, it's Mercury, it's Neptune. In, okay, Sun, Mercury, yeah, Sun and Mercury are moving to the sign of Cancer, emotions, the welling of emotion, my love, the welling of emotion, and Neptune moving through the sign of Pisces, the the tides are getting higher and higher and higher, and some of you guys are just treading, treading as best as you can, and I totally understand that. Look at this. We have Six of Swords, and she's on the water here, and then we also have Ten of Swords. She's not on the water, but you can see that it's the Earth. Earth energy here, mind energy, are things that are actively collapsing or being called to let go of, things that we're being called to release. And that can be sometimes the tough, the hardest thing, the most tough thing to do. What do we have when it comes to Earth here? We have Six of Pentacles and we have the Seven of Pentacles, right? So this is about not moving forward. So we're not getting a feeling of confirmation when it comes to, okay, the work that I'm doing right now is actively taking me somewhere. It's actively progressing me somewhere. Even with the Six of Swords here, my loves, this is more, it's in the mind, but it's not a feeling of active, um, you know, active movement forward. It's about figuring out how to mentally and emotionally heal from the connections, these, in, these intuitively in internal depth feelings of purpose, of relationship, of divine redirection, of cosmic alignment, things that is that we're feeling right now that are unavoidable, this call that we cannot not hear. I literally just made a post about this on my Instagram that says, if you hear it calling you, you're going to continue to hear it call. Like if you, you can't ignore the call because it will continue to call out to you is essentially what it was that I, what that it is that I said, um, something along the lines of that and that is so true we have the lovers card here my loves and then we also have the ten of swords so the lovers of course can represent relationship it can represent connections absolutely especially when it comes to the shadow the shadow work my loves when i say lovers yes it can be intimate and romantic relationships or friendships things that especially with Chiron retrograde in the sign of Aries, it brings up our self-doubt, it brings up the wound, it brings up the spaces that need this internal growth just for the sake of your yourself, just for the sake of your identity. And when you think about that, it forces you out into the unknown. It forces you out into the open. Whether you realize it or not, it's an energy, it's a feeling, it's a vibe. Um, Aries is very independent and regardless of you being an independent person by nature or if you're a codependent person by nature it doesn't matter spirit is is having you reconcile I'm just hearing reconcile your differences and come to recognize what those are those differences within yourselves and the disorder I just heard disordered so things that have happened in the past why past because everything is retrograde right now um, outside of these planets that are like moving through, okay, identity, self, self-worth, self-value, and your feelings and your emotions, and the tide keeps going higher and higher with that. I'm looking at the entirety of the chart, my loves. So these planets are retrograde. Um, so yeah, it just, it's really calling you to look and to um, rediscover and reconcile the differences of how you felt about something how you felt about yourself and what happened, what was projected out into the external world. Not in a way that makes you feel like, what did I do wrong? But because that's not it. That's not at all it. It's not that you've done anything wrong, but there are certain aspects within the mind, body, soul, spirit that need to be healed, that need to be soothed by your understanding, by your perspective of it. And that's gonna change everything. It's gonna make you an advocate again for yourself. It's gonna soothe off those those corners that of your of your personality or your experience. Again, remember we have these toy soldiers that are advancing. Is there really something that is blocking you? Is there really something that is an enemy to you or is the enemy in here? Is the enemy in here, right? Where is the enemy truly coming from? Because nothing is out to get you. There's nothing here that wants to get you. And the, the recognition 
is going to come from a mental space. This is what the Six of Swords actually is. This is the only card that is actively moving forward because even with the Six of Pentacles, um, yes, it's the number six, you know, something wants to come into creation here. We have three and three coming together here, coming into alignment. But even with um, the Six of Pentacles, it's more about, okay, how do I work here now present with what I am giving and what I am getting and am I asking for enough or when I ask am I abrasive or when I ask am I asking for too much these are things and why why do I feel like I'm asking for too much why do I have to do it in this way and is there a way for me to observe is this a disorder or is this a moment you know for me to heal um, move past it or cement it especially with uh, Uranus sitting in the sign of Taurus right now, breaking down our, our what we, is valuable to us, what is substantial to us, what is significant to us. And this cr shows up in our money. It shows up in our self-worth. It shows up in every aspect, right? So on the 19th, my loves, Mercury and Chiron, they square off with each other. And this is when these words can really get painful, all right? Even though we're going to see this at the very start of the week, this is going to be felt throughout the energy of the week. What are people saying to you and how are you saying it? It can really slice and dice. Trust me on that one. All right. The other thing too is also Mercury is sextile um, later on that after, farther later on in that afternoon by looking at the chart right now because the chart I have is 8.51 p.m. which is the time that I'm recording and Mercury is still um, nearing closer and closer. This is going to be probably like mad early in the morning into the wee hours on Tuesday. Mercury is going to be sextile perfect. It doesn't matter if it's perfect or not. The energy is still here. It's present. These are going to things that this is going to um, spark un really unexpected developments when it comes to communication, things that we hear, messages that we're receiving, things that we feel called to say. Thankfully, this is a really awesome opportunity for um, issues of the past to be dealt with, to be laid to rest, especially with Ten of Swords here and the Six of Swords here. These are issues that hopefully, thankfully, we can lay them to rest, especially when it comes to certain connections, um, relationships, things that were just like, I don't know what happened. It, you know, there was a disruption, something, you know, disrupted this, this, this connection. Um, when we have sun opposing Pluto like this, honestly, my loves, this is like Pluto coming in and squeezing the pus out of the sun. Out of the sun. That's, I mean, that's not the best metaphor, but honestly, especially when the sun's moving to the sign of um, Cancer, these are feelings that have been holding and harboring. You guys know Cancer can be elusive as hell when it comes to talking about their feelings because the feelings that they feel go so deep. This is not just water signs, although water and um, traditionally... Um, you know, water and earth tend to feel it the most, but, or, you know, it, you know, it is what everyone's different, but from what I can tell, this is all, all of the signs, all of the signs, um, who is going to be impacted the most by this cancer rising, cancer, sun, um, Capricorn rising, Cap Capricorn, sun, Virgo, I'm sorry, not, well, Virgo, Leo, I'm sorry, Virgo, Libra, Pisces and Aries. These are the signs that are going to be feeling it the most from what I can tell from what is that I can see. And um, Taurus, Taurus big time when it comes to um, your feelings of safety, sta sta stability, your feeling of home, where you belong. Do you feel safe supported in that environment? And if not, it's time for you to speak out. And how do you speak out? How do you, how do you address this issue? Right? So just be open to hearing what other people are saying and also realize that other people are under the same transits as you. Next thing, the 21st, Virgo is going to be, I'm sorry, Venus is going to be moving to the sign of Virgo. Personally, as a Virgo, I'm so excited about this. This is my time to shine, personally, if you ask me. I understand that we're about to enter in Leo season, but as far as I'm concerned, whenever Venus moves to Virgo, this is just my time to shine and I'm okay with that. <laughs> Big time, I'm okay with that. So Venus moves into the sign of um, Virgo and this is honestly where this is so good especially when we're talking about the retrogrades and we're talking about this pus being squeezed out men because and the reason why and also um, Mercury squaring off with Chiron and Mercury squaring off with with Uranus there is something here that has that spirit doesn't want to be missed there is something here, Seven of Pentacles, that spirit wants to be seen, that wants to be addressed, that wants to be dealt with. This is 
chances are can come in your external environment. You could be hearing from a past lover. You could be hearing from a past connection, a past friendship, um, or a bond, or a business partner. There's so many different things that this can come through. Yes, something that Five of Cups that has been causing a lot of pain, hurt, and suffering in your heart that you have been trying to move away from, especially with Six of Swords and the Ten of Swords here. Seven of Pentacles, it's pushing it out so that you can no longer, or they can no longer, the situation, the circumstance can no longer be swept aside and pushed in the back. It's shadow work, it's coming up. And this is why you want to make sure, especially with the higher font, that you're dealing with this energy, that you're working with this energy here, that you are stabilizing in this energy is when all of this disruption is happening and you know going taking steps back go with it flow with it the appearance of the higher font is so interesting because it's clearly telling you that there is steps to this process and it's to me sometimes it's very closely tied to the wheel of fortune where it's like you know, you can't, I mean, you can try, but there is definitely an order to how things happen. With the Wheel of Fortune, it's more out of our control where we kind of are at the mercy of fate. With the higher font, it is your acknowledgement um, or you being guided into, okay, this is the way that things have to happen. This is, and there's a reason why. Time Throughout time, it's proven to be more successful if we do it this way instead of jumping ahead. And this is something that I truly am feeling Spirit is calling us to see and to deal with um, this week is, okay, watch what comes through and watch ourselves as we react to it and watch how the brain, what's the first thought that comes into your mind? What's the first thought that comes into your mind when you see this, when you feel this, when you believe this once again? Um... Because the, the word disorder keeps coming through and also I can't ignore the fact that shadow work was the overarching message that was trumping this reading, shadow work. It's what we are sometimes very often afraid to see or things within ourselves that are impacting how we see the world in a way that kind of reroutes us into more painful cycles, you know, that can be really hard for us to break. And the Hierophant says, listen, my loves, instead of you jumping ahead, it's time for you to see it. It's time for you to squeeze it. It's time for you to deal with it. Okay. A lot of you guys, you know, you might not see this in external events, meaning like something coming up, but the fact that it doesn't come up, the fact that you're expecting it, the fact that you want it and it doesn't show up, how does that make you feel? What is it that you're waiting for? What, and, and, and deal with that. Sit with that. Heal that. Okay? Because this is not a blockage in your life. Spirit is trying to show you so much so that you understand it. Not that you understand it, but you also have peace with it. And you're also excited for the future that this thing that you are waiting for is not a blockage to your blessing. It's not a blockage to your, your growth. It's not a blockage to you being prosperous. Okay? Especially as the sun enters in the sign of Leo, this is when we really want to be expressive. This is really want to, when we want to be colorful. We want to be seen. We want to be heard. We want to be felt through 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 our life experience, through our passions, through what we're creating. What that knowing and understanding that it's worth it. It's valuable. Okay. Um, then on the twenty third, my loves, we're gonna have the full moon in the sign of Aquarius. And I'm going to make a whole video about this probably next. So make sure that you're subscribed. Um, but yeah, the full moon in Aquarius is happening at 1037 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the biggest thing that I'm seeing with this is this idea of detachment. And interestingly enough, it's bringing me to the hangman, which is so funny that I say this. Because that is at the root of this reading. I'm going to be working with the Tarot of Sexual Magic for the full moon in Aquarius. I don't know why I feel called to work with that one, but that's what we're going to be doing. Um, technically Aquarius energy rules the star card. So it's about distant healing, um, communities, social networking, and coming together from on an energetic platform on an energetic wavelength. But the hangman is coming through. And the reason why is because I feel like there's going to be a massive download here. That's going to be, I don't know why I just heard temptation, but, um, it's going to be massively changing of your life. I'm thinking that there might be some some temptations that are coming through, um, which doesn't feel like a bad thing. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. It doesn't feel totally like a bad thing. I'll be the first one to tell you I'm a Virgo after all. <laughs> 
Um, okay. Um, on the 24th, okay, the same words that hurt us on the start of this week, it's now, or the same thoughts that we're thinking that were painful, or the same thoughts that were difficult to process and to digest and how we say, how we articulate ourselves, we have an amazing opportunity in order to work with that, in order to flow with that, in order to heal that when Mercury then trines off with Neptune. Neptune is retrograde right now, but I still love this energy. I know that a lot of people, a lot of astrologers will disagree with me, but I just feel like if you understand the energy of these planets, you can make it work for you, not against you, and I'm definitely seeing that. Um, this is about really, I don't want to say grounding yourself, but disconnecting from the world for a minute, disconnecting from your elders, disconnecting from, you know, your responsibilities, disconnecting, like unplugging from social media to reconnect intuitively with the divine. Um, the connection there, especially if you are practicing it on the daily, it just feels so different. It feels so sparkling. It feels so healing, you know, and also if you're working with spirit in order to talk to you and speak to you, I mean, the level of enlightenment that can come through by understanding what needs to be done. It doesn't feel painful anymore. It doesn't feel painful. It feels like progress. It feels like a process that you deeply understand. All right, so let's just quickly go into the Aquarius full moon really quickly. That's going to be the 23rd. Yep, seven of swords. This is the temptation that I'm talking about under this full moon. Oh, I did not see that. Seven of swords. I don't know if you guys can see that full moon there, but it is their shining light, shining bright. Um, then we also have the seven of cups. And we also have the king of pentacles. And we also have the King of Wands. This so, so much speaks to me again about temptation. It's about really being mindful and choosy in what you are choosing. It is very tempting. Look at this man. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let's see if we can make it focus. I don't know if you guys can see that, but he's trying to figure out what he is going to choose. He's trying to figure out what he understands and he sees his options here. His mind might even be clouded by the decisions and the choices that he's already made. And spirit is saying, full moon in Aquarius, detach, detach, seven of swords, be out the back door, be out the back door. This is four of swords here. Rest just a little bit. Something something is brewing here. All right. I'll meet you guys in my next video, which is going to be the full moon in Aquarius. Again, at 1037 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure you are subscribed and you're turning on your notifications so that you can sit with me. We can vibe and we can talk about it together. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.